Hey everyone, Dr. Jamie here with The Dr. Jamie Show. You are about to listen to content that has the opportunity to increase your success, happiness, and overall likability. Now that sounds like some serious fun, but before we jump into the content, do me a favor, subscribe to The Dr. Jamie Show. Every subscription, every download, every like, every follow keeps this show bringing on amazing guests for you. And now, off to success, happiness, and likability. Hey, Vera, welcome back to the Dr. Jamie Show. Glad to have you here again. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so you've been writing some articles, doing some stuff on exponential growth um, in leaders. And I think this is so important because we do. We want to, as leaders, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, we want to really find ways to move forward and to have big leaps, right? Especially as an entrepreneur, you don't want these little baby steps, although everyone listening, life is baby steps. Entrepreneurship is baby steps. But we do, we want to feel this big growth. Um, And you're going to chat with us a little bit about some of the secret ingredients and key components to achieving exponential growth uh, today. Is that right? Absolutely. Okay. So, so all the listeners are on the same page. Can you define or let us know what exponential growth is and why we should care? Exponential growth is, as you were saying, it's the exciting leaps. It's you know, shooting for the sun and landing on the moon, but it's that big, bold, ambitious dream. Like Elon Musk wants to create a colony on the moon or on on Mars. And that's not something that people talk about on everyday basis. And it's, it's, it's not something that is commonplace. So it's really about being out there speaking your passion and, um, being an inspiration. Okay. All right. Why should business leaders, why should owners, entrepreneurs, people with dreams and goals, why should they care so much about exponential growth? It's a matter of what do you want to create in your life? Mm -hmm. And you can obviously go slow and steady and create small shifts and have an impact in a small environment and in a small community. But how awesome would it be for an individual to have global impact, Mm -hmm. right? And at the end of the day, we don't have much of life to live uh, in the grand scheme of things. And if you can make an impact that matters, um, that really resonates with a lot of people. Why wouldn't you go for something like that? Yeah. And I think, and you know, to answer that, even though that was a rhetorical question to answer that, I think so many people don't think that they can do they, that they can colonize Mars. Um, they don't think that they can write that book. They don't think that they could go for that degree because of self doubt. And so, but I have to tell you, I couldn't agree more with you. So, um, when I, up until today, actually, Vera, I get, emails from people saying, I listened to your podcast and it made me leave the job I was miserable at after talking with my family. And now I'm doing this and I love every day of my life. Jamie, I read your book and you know, I I now go to the gym and exercise. Like it's just an amazing thing. And it's, it's global Vera. And never did I think when I wrote my book that some guy in India would tell me he won a Google scholarship and I took part in that. And it is such an amazing feeling. But when you start the journey, and this is, I guess, for the listeners out there, when you start the journey, you do start with the baby steps, but you've got to take on something bigger than you think it is. Like maybe writing the book, for example, no way could I ever write a book. Oh my God. Cause you're thinking 300 pages and oh my God, just take it on. And then baby steps from there, but jump to something you think you can't do because you can make a global change and it makes such a tremendous impact in your own personal life. Um, so I guess, okay. So now we know a little bit about exponential growth, why, why we should care so much about it. But now I know a lot of leaders and they tend to trap themselves in this stagnation and they destroy their exponential growth. How, what are they doing to actually, you know, make themselves stagnant? What are some things they're doing wrong? 
it's it's not a matter of doing wrong, but let me give you an example. So when you're talking to or looking at startup entrepreneurs and founders, there's always that huge vision. They're going to change the world. If you look at their projections, it's like a hockey stick. It takes off and there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm behind it. If you're talking to more established business owners and companies, their targets, their aim is to get eh, maybe 10 year, you know, increase year over year. And they're happy with that. So it's just this whole mentality between being in that early stage environment versus getting into, you know, an established sort of the next cycle of, of corporate development. And that's the main difference between those people who have the big vision and who are going for it um, versus not. And let me give you an, another example. For instance, um, Amazon they're trying to stay in this startup mode. And they're a huge corporation, but because they are focused on staying in the startup mode, they're constantly innovating. They're constantly looking at what can they do to change or stay agile. So that's that's the biggest part of it. And it's really a matter of focusing on the big vision instead of allowing for current life's business limitations take over your entire vision be like, well, this is what's realistic for me today. And that's enough. I do you know, know what I mean? you mean. And so I like that kind of staying in the startup mode, even after you're an established business, because you want to stay passionate. You want to stay innovative. I kind of think about when I used to, when I used to work in the corporate world, when you'd get a job, you, you know, you interview, you land it and you're like gung ho about the job for the first three months. You're like in early, you're leaving late, you're checking all the emails, you're loving it. Um, and then you hit this like downslide and then it's like, oh, we hate the software update and we're coming coming into work five minutes late and we're trying to get out early and we can't wait till Friday. Um, and it's just, there's no more passion. There's no more excitement anymore. So I love that Vera sort of that mindset of staying in startup mode, even after you're established. Um, okay. So now I want the secret ingredient girl. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what is the secret ingredient behind making exponential growth become a reality for us? So in most of the cases, people are looking for that external fix, right? What is the new strategy? What's, what's a routine? What, um, what can I learn? Toolkits. And the reality is it's not an external experience. It's the inward journey that's actually going to get you to free yourself from these repeating loops and from this blocks that you find yourselves facing. And um, that's, that's the biggest secret, I think. And people who are starting to get curious and starting to look for answers, and instead of looking for them outside, start to look for them inside and say, okay, so I'm seeing a pattern in my business. Every time I start a business, it goes really well, and then something happens and we crash. And that keeps repeating, that keeps happening to me. Or it's the same thing in, you know, in relationships when you're looking for your soulmate and you get to a certain point and everything falls apart. And the reality is the only constant in all of those circumstances is you. So as difficult as it is, you have to take a look at yourself and say, okay, what are the triggers that um, put me perhaps in a defensive mode or make me think small or or make me feel really insecure when I should be making bold decisions. And that type of exploration is what will get you to be in a position to, A, think exponentially, right, and, and dream big, and then also help you with the belief that you can I actually I love that. And it. coaches can help you do these things and explore. Journaling can help you uh, note patterns of behavior and explore these different areas. You know, as you were talking and you brought up relationships, you know, I hear a lot of uh, women sometimes specifically say, you know, if when I get married or when I find Mr. Right, then I'll be happy. 
but no, it's, you've got to have that inward journey. You've got to be happy with yourself first to be able to provide. Same thing with a business. Just starting a business isn't going to make you happy. You've got to be on track inside. You've got to have plans. You've got to note patterns. You've got to note triggers um, because you have to know yourself to know how you're going to act and react once you open that business or find that partner. Um, okay, very good. So the inward journey is the first secret, is the secret ingredient to exponential growth. Now, separate of the secret ingredient, what are the key components of the action plan to achieve exponential growth? Absolutely. So the biggest part is keeping keeping an eye on the main objective, right? And it's keeping an eye on the big vision and what you're trying to achieve. And what happens with a lot of entrepreneurs, um, I'm sure you've experienced this as well, I know I have, is we struggle to create space for strategic thinking and to really get away from fighting all the daily fires and really think of, okay, if money was no object, if I didn't have all these limitations, what would I want to create? And not focus so much on the how at first, but stay focused on the what is it that you're building. And then the second part of it is you have to build in flexibility into your plan. Because think about all the times you've been at a right place at a right time, or you've bumped into a person who ended up changing the trajectory of your life or your career. And you have to allow for those things to happen. You can't have a tightly packed schedule where, you know, you, you're just going to pass those opportunities by. You kind of have to go with your gut feel sometimes and be like, you know what, this is going to be important for me. I don't know why, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. And the last one is I work on this with all of my CEO clients is we have a tendency of creating annual goals, right? And that's very daunting and overwhelming. Even if you can stream it down to five to 10 items, typically they're really big things. And so what I work with my clients on is breaking those down into quarterly goals and tracking things on 90 day basis, because that goes very quick. You don't have time for procrastination. (laughs) You can track things a lot better. Um, It's a lot easier to track 90 days worth of work versus a year worth of work. And the other key component is if things are not working out the way you expected, after 90 days, you can pivot, you can adjust, you can make a change instead yeah, of waiting Yeah, and that's part of the flexibility year. too. So, so often we get stuck in this plan. This is how I want, this is what's supposed to be. And we do, we'll shut our mind out to other opportunities. Um, we'll shut our mind out to pivoting um, because no, this is the plan. And that can be a real danger. So yes, there is a true, there's such a fine line, I, I find Vera, between being persistent and dedicated, but also knowing when it's time to cut ties with someone or something or a business to know when it's time to pivot, when it's time to alter the goal a little. There's a fine line because you want to be like, no, persistence, I don't give up. I I got to keep trucking forward. But you also have to recognize when it becomes bad business to do that too and when it's time to pivot. So you do need that flexibility. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And so I just think, I think everyone out there, if you're at a Put you, you've got to, there, you know, Vera and I, you, we, you and I need to get together and write some kind of article, the difference between persistence and knowing when it's time to pivot. Um, I think, I think Vera and I just uh, found another way to partner here. Um, but for those of you out there that feel <laughs> very stuck and very stagnant and you, you know, it's been a year and you're hitting the same nail uh, over and over again, it might be time to pivot or, or step back and take an aerial view of what's going on. And while you can have the same goal, you might have to change direction a little bit. Um, So, okay, Vera, awesome. Okay, so the last question that I wanted to ask you today is, um, you talk about not going at exponential growth alone. How would I know if I have the right kind of support to help me achieve this exponential growth you've been talking about today? Well, the right kind of support, just to define that is it's either a coach or an advisor or a mentor or a mastermind group. So there is, it's not a one size fits all, but here's some of the characteristics 
that you know that you have the right kind of support. So when you're making a critical decision and you don't feel like you're alone, you have somebody, an outlet where you can speak completely openly and explore all angles and have honest and concrete feedback. That's key to to having the right kind of support. You have to feel safe. You have to feel um, like you can trust whoever or whatever organization that you're involved with. And um, the other two pieces are that I find critical, and this is how I serve my clients, is sometimes you can be on the right track, but it's just you're going through the mud, right? And you're going through the tough bit. And you need to have someone who will cheer you on whenever you're you're in that situation and you're on the right track. But you also need someone who will push you when you're starting to slack on or, or take it easy and you're you're starting to deviate Absolutely. from where you yeah, wanted you to go. Do. Yeah, you do. You do. You need someone to cheer you on, but not let you give up. Keep pushing. You hold you accountable. Those are the great things about mentors and coaches and advisors. And going back to your, you know, about critical decisions that you're making. It's so important to know who you're surrounding yourself with and be really aware of that because if you surround yourself with people that you think are, you know, a great cheerleader for you on the sideline, but meanwhile, they're planting seeds of doubt in your mind. Those are the people you don't want to turn to when you're feeling low. Um, or if you're excited about starting a new business venture and they're always making you doubt yourself or they're backing you into a corner and making you say yes to things that you want to say no to. You really have to take an assessment before you begin any adventure or, or venture of your life um, and, and look at the toxic people that could be sitting around you because one toxic person can take an entire team of 50 down. It can easily take a man of one down. So um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the critical component to the exponential growth and achieving exponential growth is that whoever you choose to support you have to genuinely hold the possibility for you to achieve that I love exponential that. That's a great and tip. beyond. Vera, you always come with great tips. Thank you so much for chatting with us about exponential growth today. Uh, for anyone out there, sort of, I want to get a hold of Vera. I want to learn more about her, her coaching, uh, some of her writings, her articles. Where can they go to learn more about you? I will uh, share the links with you. Uh, my website is globalelementsconsulting.com. And uh, you can find me on, li on LinkedIn as well under Vera Anderson. So I look forward to connecting you with everyone. Excellent. Thanks again for joining us on the Dr. Jamie Show again, Vera. Have a great day. Thank you. Dr. Jamie here, and this episode is sponsored to you by Academic Alliance in Dermatology. Let me tell you, these people can be trusted when it comes to your skin. They are privately and locally owned, and they're celebrating 30 years in business. They have 17 locations through Tampa Bay, and they can take care of all your skin needs. They work with adults. They work with children. They do most surgeries and aesthetics. You can count on their longevity and experience when it comes to your skin. Do me a favor. Visit them at tampadermatology.com. Thank you so much for listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I really hope that you enjoyed the tips and advice given on today's segment. Do me a favor and go to iTunes and my YouTube and please subscribe to that channel. Every subscribe, every like, every follow helps the Dr. Jamie Show grow so that we can bring you the best guest and the best content possible. And of course, as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to leave that as well. Talk to you soon.